Since 1994, Israel Finkelstein, a professor of archaeology at Tel Aviv University, has made three sizable downdatings to the conventional, or high, chronology of Iron Age Palestine, that is, Palestine from the days of the Philistine invasion to the Babylonian conquest. These downdatings are, firstly, the downdating of the arrival of the Philistines in Canaan from circa 1180 to circa 1130 BC. Secondly, the downdating of the beginning of Iron Age 2A from circa 1000 to circa 920 BC, since the mid 2000s, circa 940 BC, largely due to the evidence from Shawshank I's topographic list. And thirdly, the downdating of the destructions in Israel at the end of the Iron Age 2A from circa 926 BC with Shishak of Egypt being the culprit, to circa 826 BC, with Hazel of Damascus being the culprit. So, what does this have to do with the Bible? The Bible credits David with conquering the kingdom. But it is Solomon, his son, who is the great builder. This was the purpose of the forced labor which Solomon imposed. It was to build the house of Yahweh and the wall of Jerusalem, Hatzor, Megiddo, and Gezer. 1 Kings 9.15 Here in Hatzor, Amnon ben Tor, director of excavations, believes this may be evidence of Solomon's building campaign. Archaeologists call it a six-chambered gate, a massive entryway fortified with towers and guardrooms. Bentor's predecessor, Yigal Yadin, first uncovered this structure. The archaeological late Iron 2A period was the first stage in which there is evidence of a united state in at least the northern half of Palestine. In biblical terms, this would correspond to the reign of Solomon. Finkelstein argues that late Iron 2A is equivalent to the Omri Jehoite period, leaving Solomon in the late Iron 1 slash early Iron 2A period, a period of thriving but gradually collapsing Canaanite city-states and no evidence of a centralized monarchy anywhere in Palestine. Finkelstein's third down dating is backed by good evidence. There is excellent similarity between both the pottery and architecture of Samaria building period 1 and the Jezreel enclosure, which were known from the Bible to have been Amrod, with the pottery and architecture of such classic Solomonic sites as Megiddo, Stratum 5a, Gezer, Stratum 8, and Hatzor, Stratum 10. There was also good reason to identify the destroyer of Hatzor Stratum 9, Megiddo Stratum 5a, and Gezer Stratum 8 with Hazel rather than Shawshank I. All radiocarbon data from Rehov to Megiddo to Gat to Hatzor pointed to the conclusion that the destruction wave toward the end of the Iron 2a was done the late 9th, not late 10th century BC. Hazel was described in 2 Kings 10.32 as taking portions of Israelite territory and defeating Israel and its borders was, before Israel Finkelstein's revisions, considered to be a king without attestation in the Jezreel Valley's record of destructions. The evidence that the Iron Age 2A lasted one to the 9th century BC became, by the early 2000s, unanimously agreed upon by all relevant scholars. However, the question of whether the late Iron 2A included Solomon's mid-10th century BC reign became a hotly contested issue. In the late 1990s, samples collected from Dor seemed to support the lowering of the beginning of the Iron 2A, although over a third of the results were clearly too late. Archaeologists Amahe Mazar and others argued that radiocarbon results from Tel Hove in 2001 bolstered Solomon's claim to be partially contemporary with the late Iron 2A. Thus, Mazar became the leading voice of the proponents of this modified high chronology. The debate around the results from Teller Hove was largely centered around the use of Bayesian analysis, which attempts to analyze radiocarbon dates 
by incorporating them into other chronological information about the site, such as sequences of layers. Since the ratio of carbon-14 to carbon-12 in the atmosphere is not a constant rate throughout time, radiocarbon dates require calibration to make them correspond with historical dates. In the case of Teller Hove, the average radiocarbon dates for stratum-6 and the succeeding stratum-5 were nearly the same. There are two solutions to this problem, one shown in the graphs and one stated in the text. In 2007, however, a large radiocarbon study headed by the excavators of Tel Dor using 37 good short-lived samples unambiguously supported the low chronology, although the transitions were clearly too low, since, as we know from Shawshank the First's list, the early Iron 2A had already begun by the time Shawshank the First campaigned in Canaan. In 2010, a remarkably consistent set of dates came from the early iron to a site of Atar Haroa in the wilderness of Zin. The numerous early iron to a sites in the wilderness of Zin were almost certainly spurred by the growth of the copper industry in the Fainan area. The growth of Palestine's trade with copper-rich Cyprus in the late iron to a helped spur the demise of this industry, which continued in a diminished state until the late 9th century BC. By the modified high chronology, the early Iron 2A sites in the wilderness of Zin should have had their main phase in the early 10th century BC. The results for Atar Haroa showed that the site, and very likely all those contemporary with it, with great certainty, had their main phase circa 900, not circa 980 or even circa 960 BC. Thus, the Solomonic Paradigm, one of the foundational pillars of the high chronology of Iron Age Palestine, is close to dead. Can it be resuscitated, or is it to be replaced by the Omride Paradigm, as advocated by Norma Franklin and Israel Finkelstein? If it is, the accounts of First Kings are to be called into serious historical question, and would be unambiguously explained as Assyrian era fictions recalling the glory of the past under Jeroboam II, and of the present, under Assyrian rule. Even though biblical fundamentalism is already disproven, throwing first kings into question would be one of the most serious obstacles to its continued acceptance by the plurality of the American population. Thank you for watching.